Welcome to Groves. Uh, my name is Ellen Engstrom, and I am the director of teacher training here at Groves. And uh, I am uh, very pleased to be doing this workshop tonight. As you may know, this workshop was originally scheduled with our wonderful head of school, John Alexander, who would be presenting it, and he managed, he had, um, he had a, a significant conflict, so he asked me if I would present it, and I'm delighted to do that because this is a subject that's extremely, uh, that I'm very passionate about, and, uh, but I am uh, grateful to John. Much of what you'll see in this, in this presentation is information that John put together, so I owe him a debt <coughs> And um, so um, my background is um, I've been working with uh, children and adults with dyslexia for a very long time. It's kind of scarily long, really. But uh, so I've been very fortunate to see the field evolve and really grow in its knowledge base and our understanding of this um, significant uh, condition um, and uh, so it's been thrilling first of all to understand more about the nature of dyslexia and how it affects children and adults but also to see some of the gains that we've made in actually uh, being able to treat dyslexia and uh, see lives changed as a, as a result of it. So we do know, um, we do know much more than we did when I first started working with students who had reading, who were struggling with reading, about how to um, address their issues. And uh, we also have a lot of wonderful um, accommodations uh, that we can make with technology, which is tremendously helpful as well for students with dyslexia. So, with that in mind, I will get started here. Um, I should add, too, I guess, I, uh, as part of my work with students with dyslexia, I uh, uh, am a trainer for the Wilson uh, language training group that, um, in, for the Wilson Reading System, Just Words and Foundations, which is an early prevention program. We use all of those programs here at Groves. I've also done a great deal of work and research with assistive technology, the assistive technologies that are really helpful for students who have dyslexia. Uh, so I'm uh, happy to be able to share whatever knowledge I have with you. So what I plan to do tonight is, uh, you know, we're going to look at a lot of aspects of dyslexia. Not going to go real heavily into the neuroscience of it, which I have a tendency to do. I am going to show one brain picture because I can't really ever talk about dyslexia without or give a presentation without at least one brain picture. But other than that, we're going to look at um, what the definition of dyslexia is and the assumptions we need to make in order to understand it. Uh, popular misconceptions about dyslexia, and we want to look at some facts. Um, a lot of this presentation is heavily slanted toward uh, public policy information about the uh, about the number of students who have reading who are struggling with reading and the outcomes that they have, uh, which is something that's very deeply concerning and should be to all of us. And so, uh, as we look at this um, at this condition, it's really a national program. We're going to look at how our um, students with dyslexia identified, and then what sort of foundational knowledge everybody needs to be able to be a good reader. We'll look at the interventions that are possible for students with dyslexic, what teachers need to know, 
and uh, then we'll look at some research and so on. That's an awful lot of stuff, so we'll 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 try to I'll try to get through as much as as much as I can. Um, so. First of all, though, before we do any of that, um, I want to show you a learner profile. This is a famous American. Notice I've got him all blacked out. He's a male. He has above average intelligence, probably in the superior range, ultimately. A very strong imagination. This person is highly creative with very strong logic and reasoning skills. He's also really good with visual imagery, interest in science and mechanics, and a very strong hands-on learner. His weaknesses, those are his strengths, his weaknesses fall in spelling, syntax, grammar, arithmetic, rote learning, which is memorizing things, short-term auditory memory, attention and a very slow reading rate. Okay, any idea who this might be? Could it be Edison? Wow, have you seen this before? No, <laughs> no I, don't I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, and in fact, it is Thomas Edison, this is a letter that he wrote to his mother um, uh, when he was a child. Dear mother, started store several weeks. I have grown considerably. I don't look like a boy now. How's all fold? Did you receive a box of books? Memphis that he promised to send them languages, your son Al. And if you saw his handwriting, um, which I've seen photos of, it, 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 it looks very messy and so on. And in fact, this is Thomas Alva. Edison, who was fondly known as Al. Thomas Edison was a severe dyslexic, but he also was incredibly bright, creative, and had a very, um, obviously, this is a man who invented the light bulb and the phonograph and a whole bunch of other things, some of which we don't ever use, but a lot of things that we you know, found very, very useful. Uh, Thomas Edison had a third grade education and his teacher told his mother that he was just too stupid to get anything out of school and she might as well just take him out of school. So she did. And, you know, um, he became this extraordinary inventor who has changed all of our lives in one way or another. So. If we look at dyslexia as a strict definition, uh, it would be called a language-based reading and spelling problem that is not a function of intelligence, uh, socioeconomic background, race, gender, or ethnicity, and it affects between 15 and 20 percent of the population anywhere. It's sort of a fixed percentage. Of that 15 to 20 percent, probably eight, seven or eight percent of that, um, seven or eight percent of people have a very severe form of dyslexia. Others, not so much. And dyslexia is, in fact, it's a continuum. It's, um, you know, it's not a, uh, it's not an either or, like, say, pregnancy. You're either pregnant or you're not. But with dyslexia, there's a range. So some people have, are more affected, or can ultimately learn to read, but spelling is very, very difficult. Some people have difficulty with both, and so on. So, you know, um, consequently, the, uh, one of the difficulties with labels and diagnoses is that it <coughs> tends to imply that you know, these people have dyslexia and nobody else needs to be, needs any particular intervention or work on their reading and that's not true because reading is not natural. None of us, our brains never evolved to read. So learning to read 
is something that is a very 